This is Magog, and I'm back from another edition of The House That Pain Built. Now, I've been gone partially due to work, yeah, because I haven't been able to see the cards until like about a week later, and partially because I've been chasing this new gold rush, and fan analysis, and another field. Um, there's this neat site called Patron, where the best fan analysis videos can shake down fans for a couple extra bucks. Sadly, um, this is a dash for cash, and that avenue is flooded. So here we are, MMA where the objective fan base on analysis is non-existent. And like any MMA fan will tell you, I'd rather rule in hell than serve in heaven. Um, update on Tetsuo Kawajiri, uh, UFC's recent acquisition. Um, he is a longtime Pride veteran, and he will be facing Sean Serrano. Hopefully I got that name right. Uh, side note, Sean is 11 years Tetsuo Kawajiri's junior. But Kawajiri is a fine wrestler as most of the best 155 pounder fighters out there. But he's going to be making uh, his USC debut at 145. Unless he has a bad weight cut that cripples him, I think he'll take that fight handily. Um, on the same card will be Hugh Gu Lim. Part of my pronunciation, and he is facing Turk Sefadine at Ultimate Fight Night 34. Hyun looked amazing the last time I saw him fight Pascal Cross. I expect this fight to be a lot of fun and pure stand-up. Turk has not fought since January of 2013. Let's hope that he's in acceptable fight shape. Now, on to the main focus, Fox Sports 9. Let's focus on some of the potential highlights. Sam Stout is fighting Cody McKenzie, two fan-friendly names, and it's going to be Sam Stout's debut at 145. Cody's stint in the UFC is a bit one-two-dimensional, and on the other hand, Sam Stout's sub-defense has been highly dubious and lacking in the past. Stout's been, a bit more se Stout's been a bit more seasoned, at least in the UFC, so I'm going to choose to go with him. Uh, Abel Trejillo is facing Strikeforce Challenger star Roger Bowling. Abel again has looked more promising in his UFC time, but I've been still sold on bowling for some time now. I'm going to go with Roger. I think his wrestling might make all the difference. He has good hands. The last fight kind of ended controversially, and that's why they rebooked the rematch. Um, next up is Bobby Green versus Pat Healy. Bobby is the gentleman who gave uh, Jacob Volkman his UFC walking papers, so I think he's more than competent enough to get the win on the once high times fan in this case. Uh, Pet's very durable, he has good hands, and I recall him tiring with Josh Thompson in their fight back at Strike Force. I think that's going to be the key that you'll see Healy actually wear down. Um, Max Danzing is currently staring down a two fight losing streak, and he is facing against Joe Lozon. Um, if he's the kind of fighter that can focus with his back against the wall, he might be able to get this up sign with the fact that Joe Lozon has the ability to choke whenever he seems to get on a serious roll. I guess I shouldn't be too shocked if he drops the ball here, but I'd still wager on Joe Lozon. Edson Barbosa versus Castile is Edson's most difficult opponent to date. Castile has been a bit of a mini Volkman in his own right, not to mention his team alpha males have really been on a roll lately. I think Edson is going to be too much in this fight. Unless, of course, Bang has really worked miracles with Danny's hands, or Danny's wrestling really shows Barbosa to be a turtle. I just don't know. This is one of those really close fights. Scott Jorgensen is taking on Zach Funsize McCaskey from Bellator. He gave up his last two Bellator fights, and the UFC still managed to sign him. I can totally appreciate that. He's a former Bellator champ. I think he'll do very well. He's an excellent steal despite bombing out on Bellator. I'm sure Scott doesn't really have anything for Zach th this juncture in his life. I could be wrong, though. Court McGee is taking on Ryan LaFleur. And Court's always been a tough competitor. And to be honest, I really don't know fuck all about Ryan. So you gotta go with what you know. Court by decision. Um, Chad Mendez is facing Nick Lentz. And this is kind of a slaughter more than a fight. Now, unless Chad's been overworked, he's likely taking Nick, who's wrestling, as the name suggests, is Carney level. It's C-Class, whereas Chad's wrestling has been nothing but aces at 145. Uriah Faber is taking on Michael McDonald, and this is easily going to be a main event onto itself. 
Can Fair ever fight back Father Time in his 34 years versus the young top tenor who's actually only 22? Faber really hasn't been slowing down, and Michael is kind of coming off a huge painful last to Burrell. I think Faber's all over this win with his long, his big bag of tricks, and as well the support of his team alpha male fighters that seem to really been coming into the room right now over the young prospect who might still be a little too green to get this level. In the main event, we have the 125 pound strap between uh, Demetrius Johnson versus Joseph Benavides. And Benavides has been to death to everyone at 125, well, practically everyone, and everyone at 135, practically. Sadly, Mighty Mouse is not included among that practical. Again, we'll see if Bang's new direction will be what this team is lacking. Mouse has been, hasn't been in that many close decisions in defending his title, so I think I'm going to stay conservatively and go with Demetrius. Um, there are some fights, I think, here that can go a couple of different ways. Scott might prove me wrong Saturday and then take the upset over Cast and take the upset as well as Castillo. I'm curious to see how the whole entirety of Team Alpha Males, they seem to be sucking up a lot of fights in this thing. I'm over four. I have them going two and four on this card. Let's see what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you very much.